Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Uh, not a long video today, I just want to uh, I just want to go through a, a couple of things regarding uh, the weekend's action but uh, first of all I just want to I want to talk about uh, who, who, who's to blame with this uh, this this nonsense that's called the heavyweight division who is who is to blame for this mess now I don't know and to be honest with you, at the moment, I don't really care. Does anybody care? I mean, it's got to the stage now where it's becoming a bit of a joke, in it? You know, is there anybody out there who's got any balls? You know what I mean? <clears throat> Boxers des deserve respect for getting in the ring, but come on. I think it's time now for uh, people to be stand up, to, people to stand up and be counted now, in it? It's uh, it's all getting a bit predictable, and uh, it's it's all becoming embarrassing. That there's people now that uh, they're just basically fed up, aren't they? People are fed up. Uh, I, I I'm fed up myself, uh, but I'm going to give some predictions, and I want people to listen to these predictions because. This is how you're going to get uh, a few good bets on, alright? Now, it's pretty easy really. Uh, what you do, you go to bookies and you, uh, you place a bet. Now, what you've got here, you've got, you've got nine fights on, right? You've got Austin Williams, the home fighter, 1 0. You've got Diego Pacheco, 3 0. You've got Suleiman Sissoko, 8 0. Joshua Boatsy, 10 0. Josh Kelly, 9 0. Katie Taylor, 13 0. Chris Algieri, 23 and 3. And you've got Anthony Joshua 22 and 0 and Callum Smith 25 and 0. Uh, so you know it's uh, so I'm going to go through all these with you before I, before I go through a few things that I've uh, that I want to get off my chest. Uh, I'm not in best of modes today. I've just had my wheels painted on my car and they've put the the wheels. Uh, wrong way around so but I'm gonna go track uh, tracking on tomorrow so I'll get swapped over <laughs> you got a laugh aren't you but when they apologize it's all good fun in it it's all good fun but this is what you get we're using people from out of town <laughs> right here we go Austin Williams 1-0 against Quidditch Jenkins he's fight who's had one fight and it were a loss uh, Austin Williams just beats Quidditch Jenkins easily Diego Pacheco beats Jared Ch Chavin. Uh, he's a, he's got a losing record as well. One and two he is. Uh, Suleiman Sizoko. He's eight and zero. Oh, fighting Vladimir Hernandez ten and three. Suleiman be beats wins that one. Joshua Buatsi. Uh, he ain't got an opponent at the moment, but they're saying it might be Perry Perry Ban. But. Uh, they're saying it might be in doubt now, so I don't know, but let's hope they can get it off at line. I'm sure with the amount of money that's going to be thrown around this weekend, they'll get it off at line. So I'll take Joshua Boatsy to win that fight. Josh Kelly against Ray Robinson. Now this is the one that I don't think you should put really in. You shouldn't put this in your accumulated. If you can get odds on this one, because you might not get odds on all all uh, two four six. Uh, you might not get odds on all nine as an accumulator. Now, you might only get it from Boatsy, Kelly, Taylor, Algieri, Joshua, and Smith. So you might only get six out of the nine fights at the bookies. I'd take Josh Kelly out of that bet against Ray Robinson because there's something fundamentally wrong with Josh Kelly's bottle. 
right? He's fighting away from home. He's already swerved that David and Eve and Eastian, the former world champion, twice. And he's fighting this Ray Robinson. Now, it's not Sugar Ray Robinson, obviously, but the kids. He, he, he's, he's not bad like, you know, he's not a world beater, he's a C-class fighter and they're moving Kelly from just out of novice range into probably uh, round about C-class. But, uh, so really he should win, but I think if it were me, and I would put, put it this way, if I had a lot of money, a right lot of money, I were a professional gambler and I was putting big money on, I wouldn't have Josh Kelly in my accumulator in this fight. There's something about him that I just think he, he, could, he could get beat at any time. Just like Conor Ben, if they're fighting the, the if, they, if they're getting with wrong opponent. Now, this guy's ranked 26 in the world at welterweight, and Josh Kelly, he's ranked 20 odd, isn't he? 24. So this is a 50-50 fight. It was 22 actually the other day, it's 24 now. This is a 50-50 fight. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, it's uh, a close fight. So I wouldn't have that in my bet, but I'm gonna go for, I'm gonna go for Robinson to win right on points. That's what I'm gonna go for. People might say, oh you're mad, you're going against the Sky narrative. Well look, I'm not gonna put it in my bed, but I just fancy Ray Robinson to beat Josh Kelly, but Josh Kelly is not gonna be in my prediction. I'm gonna go Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go with my bet in a minute. I'm gonna read it all out to you, but I'm gonna have Robinson to win that fight. Katie Taylor mows down Delphine Persung. They're bigging that up as a 50-50, it is not. Chris Algieri, right, Chris Algieri, Chris Algieri is not a big puncher at all, Tommy Coyle, he's got an all action style, he takes a lot of punishment and he's not a big puncher either, but he likes a tear up and he's likeable, do you know what I mean, he's likeable, he's like one of Eddie's pets isn't he, he's in Eddie pets, he's always acting goat around Eddie, he's, he like takes a teacher for, takes an apple for teacher doesn't he, so, Tommy Coyle's Eddie's little pet, so, and he's there to be knocked about by Chris Algieri. Tommy Coyle's not been in the company of anybody near Chris Algieri, right? It's a big step up for Tommy Coyle. If Tommy Coyle beats Chris Algieri, I'd be amazed. He'd be beating a former world champion. I mean, last year they were fighting Masha Dodd, right? Masha Dodd. Uh, who, who basically is uh, ranked 232 in the world. So, he, he, you know, he's fighting Masha Dodd. And uh, I, I, after it, after him, I mean, he got beat against Tyrone Nurse, Tommy Coyle. After Masha Dodd, he's fighting that Ryan Kielsowski or something. And he's like 171 in the world. I mean, these are gifts, these. Tommy Coyle fighting guys ranked 232 and 171. And then, all of a sudden, he's fighting Chris Algeria, former world champion. And, you know, I know Chris is down on box record as number 50 at the moment, but he's a top 10 uh, welterweight. Is it, is it welterweight? Top 10, so he lightweight in America. Uh, and I just think that... Uh, I just think that uh, it, it, it's, it's a win for Chris Algieri. Tommy's a lightweight. And I thought Algieri would have won 140. Have a look. Uh, yeah, he's a 140, so I wonder, uh, I wonder what weight they're going to do. This Oh, they're doing it at 140. Tommy Coyle's going up from 135 to 140. Big Tommy Coyle. Big Tom. Big Tom the prankster from all. Oh, Curtis Woodhouse used to knock about in sparring. But, uh, good luck to Tommy Coyle, he's a Yorkshireman, and obviously, well, he's, he's a codhead, isn't he, from all, but he's still a Yorkshireman, so, but Tommy Coyle gets beat against Chris Algieri, massive step up for Tommy Coyle, and uh, by the looks of it, after Joshua and Callum Smith, Tommy Coyle's propping card up for, for the rest of them, so... You know you're going places in promotion game in America, don't you? When you've got Tommy Coyle uh, on 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 your uh, on your rotor, so good luck to uh, Tommy. 
That brings us to Callum Smith against Hassan and Dam and Jikam. Right. Now this guy here, he's obviously not for to. Uh, He's not fought at this weight for a long time, has he? Uh, let's have a look. He's fighting at super middle. Now, I don't know what to uh, what to make of, make of that. To be honest, uh, he's he's. I mean, I mean, he went life and death with Martin Murray at Christmas, twenty second of December. Life and death. With Martin Murray in it, and Martin Murray's 43rd fight. Life and death. He's now getting in with massive, massive Callum Smith who wouldn't look out of place at six foot three and a half as a cruiserweight. The guy's a giant of a man. And he will bully Hassan and Dam. And he will take the Smith's record to three wins against former, current and future world champions. And 12 losses. So it'll be three and 12 and oh. Obviously, Paul Smith lost six. Stephen Smith lost four. And Beefy Smith's lost against two former current and f current and future world champions, hasn't he? So, but Callum's, obviously, he's beat Rocky Fielding, George Groves, and he'll beat Andam. So, he's going to fly the flag for the Smiths. Three and 12 and 0. Oh. What can you say? Callum Smith, a big puncher. 18 knockouts out of 25 fights. No, he isn't. At world title fights, how many knockouts has he had? He's 1-0 in world title fights. He stopped Groves. Uh, but Nicky Holtzkin, he went distance with him. Eric Scogland, he went distance with him. He blew Luke, Luke Blackledge away, but he was really a career middleweight. And uh, Norbert... Nemi Sapati, he, uh, he retired against Callum. Uh, Cesar Hearn and Reynoso, he beat him by TKO. Hedila Muhammadi, he beat him by TKO. Rocky Fielding, he beat him by TKO. Christopher Abrassi, a bit of a defensive boxer, that were a unanimous decision for our Callum, old Mundo. Oleg's Fe Fedotovs, uh, he had a losing record, 19 and 21 and 0. He stopped him, and Niccolo Selaka, Selaka or something, he beat him by unanimous decision. Uh, Rafael Sosa Pintos he stopped him. He stopped Abraham Hernandez. He went to points with Vladin Biosi. He stopped Tobias Webb. Francois Bestien, he retired against him. Ruben Eduardo Acosta stopped him. Patrick Mendy stopped him, and it just goes on and on, the amount of foreigners that he's fought. I mean, God, he's even been in with Tommy Tolan. Oh, my God. But Callum Smith's been at it since 2012, and we're now in 2019, so seven years later, and the public are still not gratifying to uh, Callum Smith, are they? Uh, I don't know why. I don't know why that is. He's obviously... He waited his chance for years for everybody to retire and get out of the way and get old. He got Groves when he were old. He uh, he didn't want to get go near Groves when Groves were at his peak. So, but he's the number one guy now in a, in a division that nobody really gives a shit about. But the other guys in the division, we know who they are, don't we? Uh, you know, Chris Eubank, Billy Joe Saunders, Gilberto Ramirez, John Ryder, Jesse Hart. You know how are they all going to be going to be a, a you know a problem for Callum Smith? He needs to really fight Anthony Dirrell, but he's 35 next birthday, uh, so I don't really know what what what's happening to be honest with Callum Smith. He needs to step up and take some take some risks, doesn't he? But why should he take risks when he's got multi millions in the bank? You know he's Brewstered, as they say in Liverpool, Brewstered. But all this talk about Callum Smith filling Anfield that Mr Bean Adam Smith's going on about, he is talking poppycock, utter poppycock from Adam Smith. That's what he's talking. There's no way on this earth that Callum Smith fills Anfield. Not, not even if he fights Floyd Mayweather, they won't do it. So, but... 
getting back to the show. Here's my predictions. Austin Williams, Paseco, Sizoko, Boazzi to win. Ray Robinson to win. Katie Taylor to win. Chris Algieri to win. Joshua to win. And Callum Smith to win. And here's how they're going to do it. Austin Williams, KO. Diego Pacheco, KO. Suleiman Sizoko. Points. Boazzi, KO. Ray Robinson, points. Katie Taylor, KO. Algieri, points. Anthony Joshua, KO. Callum Smith, KO. They're both definite KOs. And if you want to beef your bet up a little bit, if you're going for an accumulator, I'm going to be going for Anthony Joshua as a round one KO. Now that will make your accumulator bet look very, very good. But if you want to play it safe, you can always go Williams, Pacheco, Sizoko, Boazzi, Robinson, Taylor, Algieri, Joshua Smith, all to win. Just straight to wins. So basically, it's all the own fighters to win, except Josh Kelly. I'm going to go for Ray Robinson to win. All right? Right, then that's that uh, ultimate Baba. It's the ultimate Baba show. Now... Now I'm gonna I'm gonna talk now about Eddie Hearn. Is he playing Sky and Zone off against each other? Is Eddie Hearn dragging out the Joshua Wilder negotiations? Is he dragging it out so that when he leaves Sky, Dazone come to England and he gets the does own people to do pay-per-view in England and Sky don't get the fight and then he gets all the other money from other countries and that. Is that what, he's, is that what Eddie Hearn's doing? Is he playing Sky and Does own off against each other? Is he dragging it out so that Joshua, the Wilder Joshua Fury fights, they all happen without Sky? You know, when so Dazon can get all the money because nobody's fighting each other at the moment, are they? You know, I mean, Dave Allen's going on about it uh, on social media today regarding the seven people all having great fights in next, you know, in next two months and all that. But look, the main people are not fighting each other, are they? Joyce, Joe Joyce is fighting. Uh, who's Joe Joyce fighting now? Let me have a look. I forgot the name of him now. I've got that many boxers going through my head at the moment. Boxing shows and bets and predictions. Let me have a look. Joe Joyce. Uh, I can't find Joe Joyce at the moment. Let me have a look. Daniel Dubois. Daniel Dubois, he's doing all right, isn't he? Daniel Dubois. Uh, you is ranked five in England at the moment. Joe Joyce, here we go. Tom Little's up to 12 in England. Dave Allen, 6 in England, ranked above Joe Joyce. Right, Joe Joyce has got, yeah, Bryant Jennings. He's got Bryant Jennings on the 13th of July. And, uh, and Dubois fights Nathan Gorman on the same night. Now, that's a great show, that. I don't, I don't get hooked what anybody says. Joyce and Dubois fighting Jennings and Gorman. You've got three undefeated guys there going at it and Bryant Jennings who's fought for a world title. That's a hot show that. That is a hot show. Now, the problem you've got at the moment is Dave Allen won't fight on a Frank Warren show. David's already come out and said that. He's not going to burst his bubble with Eddie Earn. He's going to show loyalty. Now, 
but when Eddie's done with Dave Allen here we'll go run into Frank Warren so remember what I've said because this is how boxing is he's got to earn a living hasn't he we can't knock somebody for earning a living because David's not going to get a living doing anything else is he? he's not going to get up and go to work 95 once you've had a taste of that money it's very hard to do a 95 job but that's a good show that that is a good show actually uh, Bryant Jennings against Joe Joyce that's a good fight if Joe Joyce beats him let me tell you this Joe Joyce is going to be in the mix. Now he's ranked 28 in world. Joe Joyce at the moment, 28th, and he's ranked seven, just one below Dave Allen. Well, this is my top ten in England: Joshua Tyson Fury at the top, Dillian White third, Joe Joyce fourth, Yui fifth, Chisora sixth. Gorman 7, Dave Allen 8, Dubois 9, Price 10. They're my top 10. Uh, and, and, and you could have any, you could any, but the, 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 top, the top four speak for themselves, don't they? Joshua, Fury, White and Joyce. They're your top four. Then you've got the rest of them. I know Joyce has only had nine fights and Dubois had 11, but... Joyce is uh, 33 year old, isn't it? Debar's only 21. You is 24. He's got time on his hands, hasn't he? Uh, Gorman's 22, although he looks 32, and that, that's his words, not mine. But uh, but yeah, so it, people can say it's exciting times, but the ones below each other are all going to fight each other, aren't they? But when you look. Uh, the top guys, they're not fighting each other. I suppose Joshua's fought white, Annie, but I'm going to come to that now. I'm going to come to Joshua. Uh, people are losing the shit, aren't they, over Anthony Joshua, how, how good he is. You know, he's everybody's favourite bodybuilder. It's Anthony Joshua. He's the best thing since sliced bread. You know, he's the greatest thing ever since... He's the best thing since lights were invented in fridge refrigerators when you open your fridge and a light comes on. Joshua's the best thing since, since since then, but this is this is how I look at it, right? This is how I look at it. This is how I look at it. Andy Ruiz is Anthony Joshua's ninth pay per view. Let me repeat that again for all you people out there who are uh, Eddie Hearn nut huggers and Anthony Joshua fanboys. Andy Ruiz is Anthony Joshua's ninth pay-per-view. Right. How many of these nine pay-per-views have you watched and you've said to yourself, do you know what? That were a great value. Headline pay-per-view fight. How many? Well, let's go through them, shall we? And I'm going to give an opinion on every single one of these pay-per-view fighters. Are you ready? Here we go. Dillian White, Joshua's first pay-per-view. Now, Dillian White at the time, right? Dillian White at the time was a 16-0 novice. Right, a 16-0 novice. And basically... You know, he'd, 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 he'd done a two-year drug ban, hadn't he? He's already done a two-year drug ban. You know, so... But it was eight fights on trot since since 2014. So he'd had eight fights in ten months. So we can't really say that Dillian White were inactive because he'd, he'd done his drug ban 2012. He'd come back 2014... Uh, end of November so Dillian White basically he'd had eight fights in sorry he'd had eight fights Dillian White in a year he'd had eight fights 2000 and 21st of November 2014 Dillian White came back after his two year ban and he fought Joshua 12th of so basically it's 11 and a half month in it 11 month three weeks so let's say 
eight fights in a year. So Dillian White, he's not inactive, but he'd had that two year break, so he'd lost a bit of momentum. So could you call Dillian White a novice, 16 fights? You could say he were raw. And that two year that he missed, it would have been a better fight for him. So if he'd have had that, he'd have beat Joshua, I think. Because he come close in one round, he caught him, didn't he? And he'd not been caught yet, Joshua, up to Klitschko hitting him. So, but I'm going to call that Dillian White, novice, coming off a two year drug ban. And that over the counter substance, you know, we all make mistakes. But for me, that shouldn't have been a pay per view. British title, pay per view. Jesus, what are they thinking of? How did they pull that off? Well, they, they were writing a script, weren't they? That's what they do. They create this intense beef. That's what it's called. Intense beef. Now, second pay per view fight Charlie Martin oh my god Charles Martin what can we say about Mr Charles Martin well this is how I look at it you go from Gary Cornish to Dillian White to fighting for world title now craziness Yeah, it's craziness, and uh, Charlie Martin, he came with this aura about him that, you know, that, that I, I don't know what to say, he's possibly going to go down in history as the worst ever world champion, ever. The worst ever world champion. He fought for Tyson Fury's vacant belt. And the guy, he fell over and injured himself and he actually got it as a TKO win. Oh my God. Right. Oh my God. Right. So he won the world title January 2016, Charlie Martin. Right. But yet in eight, back up nine months, back up. Back up uh, eight and a half months, and he was fighting Tom fucking Dallas. He's fighting Tom Dallas at Madison Square Garden. Tom Planker Wood Dallas, the same Tom Wood, Tom Tom Planker Wood Dallas, who tries to bump start a fucking automatic BMW diesel. You know, like you do. Put it in second gear, and we'll bump it. Uh, it's an automatic. What the fucking hell? So you've got Tom Planker Wood Dallas, right? And then you've got Vincente Sanders, then you've White in Vitalep Glasgow, and then you get your fluke a world title. And then the skullduggery starts, doesn't it? Then the skullduggery starts. Within, right, hang on, 15, 20, 30, 44, 54, 6, 74, 75, 84, 84 days after winning the IBF world title, Charlie Martin cashed it in against. Everybody's favourite bodybuilder, Anthony Joshua, who were fighting in his 16th fight. Eddie Hearn couldn't wait to get Joshua in that ring with Charlie Martin. They take that belt off him, and then we all know what goes on, what happens then, don't they? The rest, as they say, is history. Joshua gets his he gets his first defence against Dominic Brazil. You know, Dominic Brazil, Jesus. You know, everybody's talking about him like he's great, he's this, he's that, but come on, it's Dominic Brazil. You know, it's he made his debut at Chris, uh, uh, sorry, at September 2012. Now, you know, he, he made his debut as a 27 year old so you've got a guy here he's turning pro at 27 because his football career didn't work out now any boxer turning pro at 27 he's leaving it a bit late isn't he I know people come out with all this bullshit about oh it doesn't matter it's heavyweight it's the mature late and all that it's bullshit Dominic Brazil's got mileage on clock he's been iced two times he was put to sleep while Wilder and Joshua bashed him up bashed him after death 
when he fought when he fought him. So as far as I'm concerned, that were a gimme fight for Anthony Joshua, and Anthony Joshua will, will know it were a gimme fight. So that's his first defence. So what do you think to that? The second defence. Well, what can we say? What can we say about the second defence? Do you know what, Coogan? Eric Molina's really up for this. My bum is really squeaking, Coogan. I'm really worried. And he's got a strong handshake for a part-time school teacher, Coogs. I'm really worried, Coogs. Squeaky bum time. Eric makes people's bum squeak, Molina. Oh my fucking good God. Am I a fucking lollipop here or what? Has anybody ever seen a photo of Eric the Power Molina? Has anybody ever seen a picture of him? My advice to you is go and have a look what he looks like. Eric Molina. Because I swear to God, right? He is a strange looking man. Very, very strange. But I'm going to put a picture of him. I'm going to put a picture of him up for you on inserts and uh, let me know what you think to him. But Eric Molina, he looks as gormless as, as, as can be. Now, you know, it, how can I explain it? We're born in 1982, right? We were born on the 26th of April, 1982. He's known as Eric Lee Molina or the drummer boy. Now, we, we were calling him Eric the Power Molina. <laughs> after Phil the Power Molina because he's got about as much power at boxing as Phil fucking Taylor unbelievable you know Phil Taylor the dark player that got convicted of a sex offence well I swear to god honestly unbelievable Eric drummer boy Molina or let's call him Eric the Power Molina as gormless as he looks right it is unbelievable. Now he fought Joshua in 2016. Right, he fought him as as uh, near, uh, near. He was nearly 35 year old when he fought him. Now, do, do you know what I mean? It's he shouldn't have been nowhere near Joshua Eric the Power Molina. I mean, in fair enough, he'd been beat three times, but that was a gimme fight. What a gimme fight that was. You know, he had shorter arms. You know, shorter arms and he, he had no power. Uh, very disappointed from match room. But, you know, that was Joshua's fourth pay-per-view. And he's got Eric, he's got White the Novice. Martin, the worst heavyweight champion ever, won the belt by default. Dominic Brazil, who turned pro in his 28th year, right? He was older than 27, that means, when he was born. So in his 28th year, he turned pro. And then you've got Eric, the, the part-time school teacher, geography part, the part-time geography teacher, Molina. And then everybody's gone wild, haven't they? Everybody's fuming then. So what do they go and do then? Oh, we know what they went and did, don't they? They had to go and dig Vladimir Klitschko up. 64 and 4. At, at the time, well, I'll tell you how long it was. I'll tell you how long it was. Simple. Hang on a minute, because me, uh, me, uh, there you go. 64 and 4, Vladimir Klitschko. My box set just cut out then. Uh, so basically Joshua's in his 69th fight coming off that fight that he had with Tyson Fury which he lost in a unanimous decision but it was, it was a mandatory fight so he had to fight Tyson but it was a mandatory decision right, Tyson won sorry a mandatory fight but it was a unanimous decision now Vladimir has not fought since so he, he calls it as his final cash out to people, you know, he, he looks like he passed the torch, but to be honest with you, Tyson Fury, 24 and 0 fighter, had already beat him, so he'd already passed the torch, had he really, if truth be known. But 
Nobody can really have a go at his record because Pulef, Jennings, Tyson Fury and Joshua were his last four fights. You know, and uh, they were all undefeated guys. You know, who were too big for Pulef and, and Bryant Jennings and Fury and Joshua were maybe just too young for him and fresh. But uh, this is how I look at it, right? This is how I look at it. Vladimir Klitschko, let's have a look how... It's an easy fight for a minute, but let's, let's, let's have a look at how old he were when he fought Joshua. So it's April the 29th, 2017, and he's born in 76. So he's 40, 41. He's in his 42nd year. So he's in his 42nd year and he's, fight, and he's fighting everybody's favourite bodybuilder, Anthony Joshua. Right. Everybody's favourite bodybuilder, Anthony Joshua, is £10 heavier. Now, Anthony Joshua was born a couple of days before me, actually, but he's 19 years younger. So that takes it to April. So he's 20... Seven. He's 27 at the time and six months. So we've got a 20 a guy in his 28th year against a guy in his 42nd year. So he's got 14 year on him. 14 year is the same height. Same height. 14 year younger. Longer reach. More power. You know, it just you couldn't make it up, could you? And he's not, and he's in his nineteenth fight, whereas he were in his sixty ninth fight. So nineteenth and six, so he's had fifty fights more. So he's had fifty fights more, and he's fourteen year older and fifty fights more. Are you listening to this? Fifty fights is a lot, you know. It's a lot. Fifty fights now. But you know it is what it is, isn't it? So he gets he gets vitally clitch, uh, Vladimir Klitschko out of way. So that were a life and death. I mean Tyson Fury, you know, beat him, beat him easily, but that were life and death to uh, the big Dosser. Now after that we've got Pulev, haven't we? At uh, the Principality Stadium in Cardiff, Principality Stadium in Cardiff, but. It didn't happen like that, did it? And we all know why it didn't happen like that, don't we? Eh? We all know why, don't we? Well, why? Uh, it's simple, really, isn't it? Very, very simple. Pulef fight didn't happen. 12 days to go, they slipped Carlos Tackham in. And Johnny Nelson describes Carlos Tackham as a cross between Evander Holyfield and George Foreman. Now we all remember that, don't we? The same Johnny Nelson that said Kel Brook beats Triple G and he can see how Amir Khan beats Canelo and he can see how Conor McGregor is fitter and he can drag Mayweather into trenches and beat him. That Johnny Nelson, yeah the one and only Johnny Nelson flies business class at Sky. A complete moron. Uh, who just will not go away, go away off our screens, will he? You know, he, he's, he's embarrassing, and I can now see why people just think he's a complete helmet every month. The votes I get in for Johnny Nelson, he's a regular helmet. Uh, he is a helmet. There's helmets and there's super helmets, and we need to start changing it to super helmet of the month instead of just helmets because. Johnny Nelson is a fully blown helmet, you know what I mean? But some of the stuff he comes out with is unbelievable, I mean, all this is coming out with yesterday about Andy Ruiz being the fastest combination puncher, you know, in boxing and he's going on about, yeah but he's Mexican and they're tough and they don't quit and, you ever heard the phrase, Mexican road sweepers, or Mexican cab drivers, well, Andy Ruiz is basically a Mexican cab driver. He's not even B class. He shouldn't have been fighting for a world title fight, but when Parker beat him for a world title fight in New Zealand, 
Everybody at Sky, Johnny Nelson, Adam Smith, they all said, oh, well, I thought Joseph Parker beat Andy Ruiz. I thought he beat him. Now, all of a sudden, because he's fighting the big Dos of Femi, they're all saying, oh, well, I, I think Ruiz, you know, could, I think he beat him in that fight. You know, and all of a sudden, Andy Ruiz Jr., he beat Joseph Parker. He beat him, according to Adam Smith, you know, the head of Sky Boxing. Do you know what I mean? It's, uh, it's craziness. Just tell us where the children are, Adam, please. And just just tell us where you've put them. You know, old Rumpelstiltskin, Adam's, Adam Smith. Adam, do us all a favour and resign. We all know you're trying to get a job at fucking DAZN. Why don't you fuck off? You give me fucking indigestion, you prick. Now, after Carlos the Power 2, Tackham, or Carlos M. Bison... Uh, uh, Tackham, or what else can we call him? Carlos Mortal Kombat Tackham. These are all names I've nicked off uh, Uncle Ultra. <laughs> but no, Ultra Tech Sports Raw. Give him a follow on YouTube. He's a top man in Ultra Tech Sports Raw. But Carlos Tackham is a gatekeeper. He is the Derek Chisora of France. That's what he is. He is the Derek Chisora of France. And he was beating Derek Chisora, wasn't he, till Derek Chisora pulled a punch out of nowhere. He would have punched as if he thought Sonny were taking his, di his, uh, his dinner money off him. But Derek Chisora's spent in here, and that's, I don't want to talk about him anyway, he's had his day, but I uh, wish him well. But Carlos Tackham, he shouldn't have been in that ring with Joshua. Oh my God. Oh my God. There were no refunds for anybody that night, weren't they, waiting for the pool left fight. But because they sold the pool left fight out in Cardiff, they will be going back there again. Now, it's no secret that they're looking at Cardiff again, you know, just before Christmas. Just like 2017, but they're going to get the pool left fight two years later. So I think it'll be pool left, the IBF mandatory. Because Pool F won't be take it, taking step aside money. It'll be Pool F this Christmas. I can assure you at the Principality, Principality Stadium. Joshua Pool F. We've got to get our mandrises out of the way. We've worked hard for this belt. Dillian White will get overlooked again. It will be Pool F. And then it will be Usyk. And they'll keep giving Dillian White the, the victims from Joshua. And that's how it's going to work. And who knows, Dillian White may never even fight Joshua again. But after Carlos the Power Tackham or Carlos Mortal Fucking Combat Tackham, you know, the equivalent of, jo of uh, George Foreman and Evander Fucking Holyfield, according to Johnny Nelson from Sky, do you know what I mean? Who is a massive helmet, probably because he's got a massive helmet. But... Carlos Tackham, shocking. After him, it were Joseph uh, M. Bison Parker. Or Joseph, uh, what will they say? What did Joshua say to sell that now? Is he is he some sort of is is he, is he not a Mallory or something? What what is he? He's a New Zealand guy, but is is he? Uh, I don't know. Is he part of some tribe or something? Samoan or some I don't know. Is he, he where, where's he born here? He's born in New Zealand, but he and he's some sort of person where Joshua says there's no quitting these people and the mega tougher and this and that and blah de blah. Well look, this is how I look at it, right? He came to survive for twelve rounds, that Joseph Parker. He came with a belt that he cashed in just like Charlie fucking Martin. Joseph Parker has not beat a world champion. But yet he is classed as a former fucking world champion. Charlie Martin has not beat a world champion. But he is classed as a former fucking world champion. Are you fucking confused? Because I am. Charlie Martin got a belt by beating that Glasgow. Parker got a fucking belt by beating Ruiz, who's never beat a fucking champion. Neither has Glasgow. This is how fucked up it is. All these belts are Tyson fucking Fury's belts. Tyson Fury's got four belts, and the big Dosser's got all of them. But he ain't beat Tyson Fury. That's how fucked up it is. Now, sorry for swearing, but I just lose my shit over all this. It's just a fucking mess. Now Joseph Parker, he just came and survived, and you know I gave him I gave him two rounds, 
and that's basically it and that will be in generous Joshua won 10 rounds he won 2 all that about it were close and all that load of bollocks you know I watched it recently and it was you could say 9 rounds to 2 and a round fucking shared but that's your lot so he didn't win more than 2 rounds so do you know what I mean but uh hello I don't know that is probably a troll. You know what I mean? Not what's better to do, have they? Ringing on withheld numbers, trolls. That's what trolls do. They ring on withheld numbers, and then they hang up. Right, Joseph Parker. We know what happened there, don't we? Fucking joke of a fight. Total joke. He came to survive. It was at Principality Stadium again, and everybody left fucking fuming and disgusted. Right. So what do they do then? They go talk up the Wilder fight. The Fury fight, the Dillian White fight, they go down the same old fucking route, are spewing out the same old spew, they employ all these internet fucking trolls. Anthony Joshua, he's not ducking anybody, Anthony Joshua, it's Wilder, the duck squad, it's Tyson Fury, he doesn't want any of that smoke, he doesn't want the Joshua smoke. Listen. Joshua's a greedy, greedy man. Nigerians are known for it, aren't they? He's very greedy, Joshua, for money. He's got all these blue chip companies. He's even got his own YouTube channel now. Very, very greedy for fucking money. He's greedy for a pound note. They don't want to share the fucking cake, right? They want every penny they can get. Every penny you name it they want freebies they get flown all over the place they get free this they get free that you name it i'm not going to go through the list of the list of companies that sponsor joshua the man's a walking fucking bull, billboard but he sits there and says it's not about money well just pay the people what they should be paid then if you're fighting at wembley stadium and millions and millions are getting paid why do you want to give dillian white hardly any of it get the man paid it's a domestic world title fight. Do you know what I mean? He injured himself Injured himself in first fight against you. First fight. If you can't get Fury and Wilder, get Dillian White. They're the top four guys. They've all got them fighting each other. Now, Dillian White's gone... Uh, is it 10-0 since he... Uh, since he lost against him? Or 9? I can't remember now, but... Getting four... Getting four, I swear to God, honestly... Dillian White should be fighting him. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, if if Dillian White beats Rivers, is well, if Dillian White's gone nine and zero, oh, nine and zero oh, since he fought Joshua with five knockouts. So as far as I'm concerned, Dillian White's he's paid his dues, hasn't he? Now Joshua should pay him the money. But getting back to this, we're up to. Alexander Povetkin. Now he's in his 40th year. Right, he's a former WBA regular champion and a former Olympic gold medalist, but not at super heavyweight like Joshua and Lennox Lewis. At heavyweight, did you hear me? Heavyweight, right, which is like equivalent of cruiserweight. All right. Now Alexander Povetkin. Now. Let's have a look at his record. Who has he beat? Let's have a look. Well, he's beat Chagayoff. Uh, Chris Bird, that's his first champion that he's beat. Chris Bird, he basically Chris Bird were a light heavyweight back in day one here. He's beat Chris Bird. These are the ones that I recognise. Uh, Ruslan Chegayov, that's two world champions he's beat. Marco Wook, three. Rahman, four. Uh, Manuel Char, five. Uh, Marius Vak, six. He's beat some guys, hasn't he? Uh, Marius, he's beat six world champions, but he ran into Joshua, and Joshua just ran straight through him. Joshua, right, for him, as a 20... 
He appointed him a month before, in his 29th year. Joshua's in his 29th year and Pavetkin is in his 40th year. So Joshua's got, well, he's got, he's got four inch in height. He's got a longer reach. He's got 11 years younger and he's got 23 and a quarter pound heavier. Right, God. Talk about having everything in your fucking own favour. And he's got a 28% punch KO ratio on him. So basically, he's in his 36th fight. And Joshua's in his... And he's had 14 fights less. Oh my God. Talk about everything stacked in Joshua's favour. Oh my God. Eh? Unbelievable. Joshua just ran it, ran straight through him, and uh, he lost a couple of rounds, didn't he? And, uh, he, you know, he, Joshua will, will win the fight by probably two rounds when it got stopped. But, uh, you know, Joshua beat him by TKO in seventh round, and he's got it in his contract that he's going to come back for another big fight again. Probably a pay per view against Dillian White, I'd have thought at some stage, because Dillian White seems to get pay per views over all them guys Joshua's fought, and there's no wrong with that, as long as Dillian White gets to have the uh, gets to have the fight against uh, Joshua, which we all want, don't we? Which brings us to Jarrell Miller. Jarrell Miller. Let me just, after this, let me just get this email off my uh, computer here that somebody sent me here. Christian Laboutin, Spike Sock Studded Low Top Trainers. Oh my God, I wouldn't be seen dead in them. Give me a pair of Nike Air Max any day, 250 quid all day. Why would I pay a thousand pounds for a pair of Laboutins? They look like a, tra a pair of trainers that dicks would wear from Essex. Oh my God, dick trainers. But no, getting back to uh, to this, and uh, two seconds, let me just uh, answer this here. Oh, it's an email off a plant pot. <laughs> Uh, uh, what's up, me, my good friend, my good friend? Uh, but, uh, uh, but now, which brings us to Jarrell Miller. I'll make it quick on Jarrell Miller. We all know what happened. You know, the guy was juicing and he deserves to be kicked out of the sport. I don't want to see him back again, but I'm going to go on record and say that Eddie Hearn will have Jarrell Miller back on Sky Sports. They will create a script. They will, he will do talks in schools or whatever. Basically, he will kiss ass. To come back and get some money out of the out of the out of the uh, out of the out of the Dazone and Sky and boxing gravy train, because if Eddie Earn and Sky can put Povetkin on, who is a two-time drug cheat, and not mention it in any interviews that Povetkin's a drug cheat, if they can put him in against Joshua, they can put anybody on, can't they? So, Miller will come back. I mean, Povetkin were hated when he failed that test against, uh, before he fought Wilder, but nobody mentioned it when it went, nobody mentioned it uh, when he was fighting Joshua, but, so, so that's as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, but it is what it is, isn't it? I mean, Joshua's already beat Povetkin, he's beat Dillian White, had an over-the-counter substance, and, and I sympathise with people like that, but you have to know what you're taking, don't you? And I'm sure there's many others that have took stuff down the line. But uh, Jarrell Miller failed a drug test, so they're looking for a fighter. What they should have done, they should have paid Luis Ortiz the money, because he's a danger man. We all know that Joshua don't like southpaws, and he didn't fancy it, and... Robert McCracken didn't fancy it with him being a southpaw. They wanted to wait while Louis Ortiz got old. They tried to get him on the cheap. Everybody thought they had Eddie over a barrel, but Eddie pulled the plug and they went for an easy win. They've got Andy Ruiz in. Now, we all know what Andy Ruiz is, don't we? This is all you've got to do to find out what somebody is. Go and look. Right, go and look. 
at their box wreck. Go and look at it. Go and look at who they beat. Who has Andy Ruiz beat? Who? Who has he beat? He's not beat anybody, has he, Andy Ruiz? It's a shocker. Andy Ruiz, right, his best win is who? Alexandra Dimitrenko. Is that his best win, his last one out? He was fighting Kevin fucking Johnson, you know, ten months ago. Ten months ago, he was fighting Kevin fucking... What's his nickname, that Kevin Johnson now? His, his proper name's Kevin Blue Johnson, right? But he had a nickname, didn't he? Is it, is it the Kingpin? Kevin the fucking Safety Pin Johnson. It shouldn't be fucking Kingpin, should it? 34 and 13 and a draw. What the fuck? Eh? Well, he, he, him were going to retire after Joshua blew him away. Well, after Joshua blew Kevin Johnson away, he said that was it for him. He were never fighting again. He couldn't compete with these younger guys. That was 2015, 30th of May. That was four years ago today. Four years ago today, he were retiring. I did an interview with IFL. That's me done. Okay, Kevin. Well, fuck off then. We don't want to see you coming over here stinking out the fucking joint. And what did he do? Since then, he's had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. He's, a, he's had 11 fights since then. 11 fucking fights. You know, he's probably earned a million quid since then. Now, million dollars he's had since then. Now, let's have a look how many he's had in Britain since then. One. Two. He's had two in Britain and eight at other places. Germany and Zagreb and fucking. He's had one in America. He's had two in America, two in Britain, that's four. And he's had one, two, three, four in Germany, five in Germany, two in Britain, two in America. And one in Zagreb. That is it. That is Kevin Johnson. Kevin the King Kevin Kingpin Johnson, but I call him Kevin Safety Pin Johnson. Because the guy's shocking. Safety first, but Joshua smashed him up and he was retiring. Jesus. And how old is he now? He's 40 in a couple of months and still going strong, still turning up, still taking losses. He'll be one of them like, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. You know, when you ask him, you, you go to the pub and you say, what do you want to drink? And he goes, oh, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. Like that. You can't even talk. Well, since Anthony Joshua iced him, he's gone, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. He's gone, he's gone five and six since Joshua iced him. Five and six, what's that tell you? And the guys he's beat have got records like 11, 32 and six. Uh, Terrell Jamel won to beat him. Then he lost against Pulef. Then he beat Eng Egin Solmaz. He was seven and 40 and three. Then, lo and behold, he beat Francesco Pianetta. He must have softened him up for Tyson Fury. He even stopped Pianetta, which is something that Tyson Fury couldn't do. That says a lot for Tyson Fury's power, that the people in the Fury power group keep going on about. Fury power! Fury power! Couldn't even stop Pianetta, but Kevin Safety Pin Johnson did. Oh my fucking good God. Then you've got Petter Millis. He lost against him. Then he lost against Andy Ruiz Jr. On points. Fucking hell fire. Kevin Safety Pin Johnson actually went the distance 10 rounds with Andy fucking Ruiz. And he fights fucking Joshua Saturday. Fucking hell fire. He then went to the points with Daniel Dubois, an 8-0 novice, who uh, 
uh, 17 pounds lighter than him. He then beat a guy called Harris Radmilovic, who were 200, who were 20 stone. He beat him and he had a career best of 8 and 30. He then lost against Philip Hergovic, a 6 and 0 novice. I think that said he's getting it. He's then beat a guy 8 and 31, Harris Radmilovic. Now that name rings a bell. Oh, what do you know? He just fought him uh, three weeks before. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Let me have a look at this. 1st of December 2018, he beats him by TKO in third round, but then he fights him 22nd of December 2018, Harris Radmilovic, right? Now, Red Malofics lost 18 and a quarter pound. And Johnson beat him again in third round. But how can you fight somebody that you've stopped by TKO within a month? You can't do that by board rules. Unless it don't... Unless it's done... It, unless they don't do that in Germany. Unless you can get knocked out and fight three weeks later and, and get knocked out again and it don't matter. Well, in England we have a safety... You can't fight if you get stopped within a month. You have to have a month break. So I think then you even have to go in front of the board. So that just shows you how far ahead the British Boxing Board are than Germany. So, but TK went third round both fights. Mm, that's a bit smelly, isn't it? So basically, he's gone five and six. He's then lost against Gorman, 15 and 0 fighter. Who uh, were 12 and three quarter pounds lighter than him? So Gorman's beat him. So he's 16 and 0 now. But this is how I look at it, right? He's gone five and six, old Kevin Safety Pin Johnson. But the five wins against all guys with terrible losing records. So he's another guy. He's a disaster waiting to happen, Kevin Johnson. But when you look at him, right, he'll not be able to get a job looking like that, will he? Because in America, they don't they don't get jobs out, do they? Like like they do in other countries. So he's probably not. What's he gonna do? He'll be talking like Riddick Bow in a few months, but no, in a few years. I hope not. But he needs to get out at game him. He needs to get out at game. Kevin Blue Johnson, alias Kingpin, fucking Kingpin. Jesus, he's the he, he's the Frank fucking Lucas of of, uh, of Georgia. Lawrenceville, Georgia, Jesus Christ, kingpin, fucking safety pin. So that's basically it, really. We've gone through Joshua's record. Like I said, we've come up to... Uh, we've come up to uh, Yarrell Miller. He's a failed a drug test. They didn't get Ortiz in. And we're going to finish off with this. He slipped in the one and only Andy Ruiz. He's fucking shocker. Fat as a fucking pig. Michelin man. Fucking Mr. Fucking Blubber man. He's got Andy Ruiz in. And we've got Adam Smith. The wheel that Adam Smith. And Matt Macklin. And Darren Barker. And all the rest of them. The wheel them all out. I mean, fucking hell. Did you hear Tony Bell you earlier on... on uh, social media in that interview are going on and on and on about Andy Ruiz fast hands and Joshua's got to be careful and this is a tricky fight and he don't need to look by this fight and there's plenty of banana skins to slip up on and how many more times is Adam fucking Smith gonna go on about fucking Lennox Lewis slipped on a banana against Asi Rackman and Oliver McCall fucking hell I don't want to hear it Fucking Jesus Christ. I don't want to hear about Lennox Lewis against uh, Hassim Rahman. And blah de blah in South Africa. And Lennox were doing that film, Ocean's Eleven. And he got wrapped up in all that. And it was... It, and it, and it, and it, uh, it, 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 it put something in his brain so he wasn't concentrating on fight and he took his eye off the ball and it was a banana skin and Anthony Joshua and Robert McCracken have not got to look past this banana skin. Adam Smith, fuck off with your banana skins. Alright, or I'm gonna call I'm gonna change your name from Mr. Bean to fucking Banana Man. Jesus Christ, Banana Man. 
fucking banana skins and slipping up and this and that. It's a fucking dog shit fight. Andy Ruiz shouldn't even be in the same fucking country as Joshua, never mind fucking same arena or same ring. Fuck's sake. So... Nine pay-per-views. White, Martin, Brazil, Molina, Klitschko, Takam, Parker, Povetkin, Ruiz. Dog shit, a lot of them. You could say Dillian White fight were half alright, but it shouldn't have been a pay-per-view anyway, British fucking title. Martin were a shit, Brazil was shit, Molina was shit, Klitschko life and death, yeah that were good value. Takam shit, Parker shit, Povetkin shit, and Ruiz is even shitter. So you've got eight fucking shit out of nine. Can you see a pattern here, what they're doing with Joshua? They're going to keep writing scripts to keep bigging fights up because they've got the platform on Sky. They've got IFL, they've got Behind the Gloves, they've got Boxing Social. None of them dare say a fucking boo against Eddie Hearn or Joshua. They all know it's dog shit. Utter dog shit, but they dare not say it because they don't want to lose the press passes. Well, I'm going to say it. Joshua against Andy Ruiz is shit. And Joshua is going to make a statement and he's going to want to blow him away inside one round just to say, I can punch just as hard as you, uh, to Wilder. That's what he's going to want to do. Fucking shit. But then again, can Joshua pull the trigger at world level? Because I'm having me fucking doubts. Who has Joshua iced at world level? One guy. Vladimir fucking Klitschko and that's it. So, peace out, keep on trucking. You've got all my predictions. All the home fighters are going to win except Josh Kelly. He's going to get beat by Ray Robinson. All the rest of them, they all win. So, go on to your box, mate. Look on the left-hand side. All the left-hand side win. Except Joshua. Except Josh Kelly, sorry. Oh, and I've got Tommy Coyle to get beat as well. Tommy Coyle gets beat as well. So, that's just my opinion. But Chris Algieri, he's on the left-hand side on BoxRec, isn't he? So, if you're going to BoxRec, click on Joshua's name, and then click on the right-hand side where it says Event. Right, and what you do, you look on the left-hand side. They all win. All the lot of them win, except Josh Kelly, in my opinion. But I'm not telling you to go and put a bet on. If you want to bet, and you wanna and you wanna play it safe, just do that just do that what I've just said there. Just get all the bets on that you can. Try and make your bet a bit more interesting. Now my bet's gonna go on, but I'm gonna slip Joshua on as a round one win, right, in my accumulator to try and get, you know, some sort of odds because Joshua is one to thirty-three. Callum Smith is one to thirty-three. Do you see a fucking pattern here with this? One to thirty-three pay-per-view! we we'll have a fucking heart attack. 1 to 33. Pay per view. Headline fight. So you've got to put 33 quid on to win a fucking quid. And the other one, Callan Smith, 33 to 1. What? you got to put 33 quid on to win a quid with him. It's a joke. It's embarrassing and I'm sick of it. Now you've got 30, 60, 73. We've got about 70 minutes here. A raging pork. So, peace out, keep on trucking. Shout out to Climate Cool and South Yorkshire Packaging. Thank you for your continued support with the channel. It's much appreciated. And a special shout out to Rico, who helped me uh, start the channel. He's my good friend, and uh, the channel's going in the right direction. And a shout out to Kay Fisher, who helped me for six months with uploading and that, and some porky clothing and that. They were fantastic. And I hope uh, Paul and Emma and Lily are all alright. So peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing, and uh, like I said, it's a great sport. Alright, ciao.